things. Um, it didn't take nearly as long to dry as I thought it was going to. So I'm back. Um, it's only been not even an hour. So um, I've got my little um, sanding block and I'm just going to come in and just kind of knock some of this back. Um, give it kind of a rustic, worn feel. a wooden, an old wooden style cabinet or something, um, you could get that really worn out, recycled look uh, pretty easily, I think. And I like the way the uh, brush strokes are starting to show through, and that's why I'm only going in one direction, because um, I want to keep that kind of... Worn, worn look. I can kind of see that peeking through now. I mean, I want it to show, but I don't want it to be like up in your face, kind of showing. So. pretty good. I am going to come back through with a black um, and touch up where the where the black actually came off because I don't want any of that to um, I don't want the raw chipboard to show. So do the same thing here. 
takes a little bit of muscle to get it to scratch back. I love the way that looks, the black poking through. That looks really cool. remember I said it doesn't ever really cure um, so it's it stays movable I guess is the word so it kind of clogs up the sandpaper but it really does look pretty cool on the project You know, I did do two coats of this Tina Antiquing Cream, and I'm finding I probably should have just let um, that black kind of show through. It would have made it so much easier to sand. I didn't really need um, more than one coat, so something to think about for next time. Because whatever you put on, you got to knock it back so that what's underneath will show. And yeah, I kind of made it harder on myself, I think. <laughs> Love the look of it though that's that is exactly what I wanted Yeah. Yep. 
my sandpaper to get kind of built up again. But this is all I got left. It's just the bottom, so I'm going to make it work. And of course, you know, the box bends when you put pressure on it because it's just cardboard. So you kind of got to take a little more care around the edges to get to that even look. Yep, just knocked everything off the back side of the table. I love that. It looks so cool. Okay. So... Now I need to clean up the mess. I'm gonna clean this up and then I'll be back in a little bit and we'll touch up um, and make like these little edges where it got clear down. We'll put black back on those. So I'll be back in just a little bit. Okay, I've got everything cleaned up now. All the dust is gone. I don't wanna get dust in my uh, ink pad. So um, this is just a archival ink um, and I'm just kind of working it into where those um, where the chipboard kind of decided to poke through and I'm just going in the one direction and this is a permanent ink that's why I chose it to kind of um, get some of the black back. Um, just lightly touching it over the patina. I like to do this even on like my journal pages. Um, for some reason it just really finishes things um, to like, you know, put some edging um, back in. Just get your hands messy, but you know, hey, they wash. Like that's a little heavy, so I just, you know, just knock it back. dry over there and we'll do the box. Same way, same same idea. Just add that dark back in. Sorry, I, I keep forgetting, um, <clears throat> I just, I work so quietly that I, sometimes I forget to talk. 
but <laughs> hang with me, hang with me. Um, I am, I do have like a, a face plate that'll go in here so that that should, uh, we're going to have to antique it because I think it's bright, bright bronze maybe? It's gold? Maybe it's just gold. I don't know. Uh, so we'll, we'll have to get that. Uh, all right. I think that should, should do it for that. And, um, it does take a little bit for the permanent ink to cure, so I'm going to clean up, give that a little bit of time to soak in and get get dry, and I'm going to clean up my hands, and I'll be back.